Hi everybody, I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this is the monthly update for December 1st of 2022. I have to admit, it feels a little odd talking about Yellowstone when just a few days ago, Mauna Loa Volcano in Hawaii, the tallest active volcano on the planet, started erupting for the first time in 38 years. But I think this provides a neat opportunity to talk about the parallels and differences between Hawaiian volcanism and Yellowstone volcanism. There's actually some interesting similarities. Most volcanoes on Earth are located at the boundaries of tectonic plates, the plates that move around and make up the surface of the Earth, where they come together, where they spread apart. That's a very common place to see volcanoes. But both Yellowstone and Hawaii occur in the middle of tectonic plates, far from the boundaries. That's because these sorts of volcanoes are powered by what we call hot spots. These are anomalous areas of melting that are sourced deep within the Earth. And as they rise up, they sort of burn their way through the tectonic plate, create a volcano. But as the tectonic plate moves, it gradually carries the volcanoes away from the hotspot source, and the hotspot has to punch through again. So for hotspots, you actually see a trail of volcanoes that gets older and older and older the farther away you get from the hotspot. In Hawaii, this is a trail of old islands and seamounts that stretches all the way back to Russia and Kamchatka. And in Yellowstone, we can see that trail stretching across southern Idaho, the Snake River Plain, with the volcanoes getting older and older the farther away you get. Now, there are some important differences between the volcanism in Hawaii and Yellowstone. Now, Hawaii is on an oceanic plate, and that allows magma to rise more quickly. It doesn't stick around and change its composition in the crust. It has a basaltic composition that's got less silica in it. It's more fluid, and you get these runny lava flows that Hawaii is famous for. It builds these shield-like volcanic shapes. But Yellowstone is on a continental plate, and so the magma rises much more slowly. Eruptions are much less frequent, and the magma that's generated has a different composition, higher in silica content. It's called rhyolite, and it has much more potential to be explosive. So because of the different settings, oceanic and continental, you get fluid and frequent eruptions in places like Hawaii, and less frequent eruptions in a place like Yellowstone, the sticky lava that can occasionally explode with, with extreme violence. So some interesting parallels between these hotspots in Hawaii and Yellowstone, but also some very important differences because of their setting. Okay, now let's talk about what we observed in Yellowstone over the last month in terms of seismic activity, deformation, and geysers. November was a pretty average month for seismicity in the Yellowstone region. The University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 174 earthquakes during the month. The largest was a magnitude 2.6, located about halfway between Mammoth Hot Springs and Norris Geyser Basin. And this is part of a sequence that has been ongoing since late July of this year. And during this month, 123 of the earthquakes located in Yellowstone were part of this sequence. So pretty average for Yellowstone with this continuing sequence of seismicity occurring between Norris and Mammoth. Turning now to ground deformation, we've seen not a whole lot of change over the last few months. This is the last two years of vertical deformation on the east side of the caldera at the White Lake GPS station. Each one of these blue dots represents one day of data with downward trends indicating subsidence and upward trends indicating uplift. And the overall trend since 2015 has been subsidence, and it's interrupted during the summer months as groundwater recharge from snowmelt sort of puffs up the ground like a sponge that's soaking up water. And then outside of the summer months, you see that continued subsidence. So here's the summer disturbance in 2022, and then we have some sort of chaotic changes towards the end of this sequence in November, and this is because of a large snowstorm that struck in November. This covers the GPS antennas and distorts the signals, and so this is something of an artifact. So there hasn't been a whole lot of net deformation, total deformation, over the last few months at Yellowstone. The same is true if we look over at the west side of the caldera at a station that's located near Old Faithful. Overall subsidence over this two-year period, and you can see this disturbance that occurred in November due to the heavy snow. We also see this at Norris Geyser Basin. Not a whole lot of changes over the last couple of years, and then there's quite a dramatic uh, artifact right here due to that snow accumulation on the antenna. Even if we go outside Yellowstone National Park, and this is a GPS station that's in Paradise Valley, Montana, so north of the park, you can see that same sequence of disturbance due to the heavy snow that fell throughout the region. So in November, there was a few centimeter artifact that was caused by that heavy snowfall. It doesn't affect our overall impact to monitor the region because we would expect to see much larger changes than these small deviations if there was something going on. But it's an, an interesting example of just how sensitive these uh, GPS stations are to even changes in, in weather and, and how uh, they can pick up all kinds of interesting signals.
And then finally, moving to geyser activity, and everybody's favorite geyser, Steamboat Geyser, the tallest active geyser in the world. It did have an eruption in November, on November 5th, right here. This is the temperature record in the Steamboat outflow channel, basically the water temperature. You can see that spike, that's the eruption, and then the temperature drops back down and goes basically down to zero, freezing temperatures in the uh, cold months there. And then we started in on the 20th of November seeing a, a, an increase in minor eruptive activity. So there's clearly water coming out of the geyser right here. And that suggests that Steamboat is not done erupting. Hopefully we'll see another eruption in December. So far in 2022, there have been 10 eruptions of Steamboat Geyser, quite a few less than we've seen in previous years, but still more than is usual for, for Steamboat. So it's still putting on quite the show. Well, that does it for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory's monthly update for December 1st, 2022. Now, remember, if you'd like more information, you can always feel free to email us at yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov. And if you'd like more information on Yellowstone or the activity that's occurring at Mauna Loa, you can find us on social media, USGS Volcanoes. We have a very large web presence and putting lots of information about the eruption online. And you can also subscribe to get volcano alerts in your email through the Volcano Notification Service. So check that out if you'd like more information. Thanks everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next month. Bye bye.